Hi, I'm Chuck Dorsett for Weaver Leather Supply, and this is the Leather Element. If you've got a good question for us, or a good idea for a Leather Element, drop it in the comment box below. We're going to do some shop tricks. Now, one or two of these have been in videos over the years, but I'm going this route for a couple of reasons. First off, with 300 plus videos, yeah, sometimes it can be a little hard to find these. So for the new folks, let's help them out. But secondly, these are tricks that I use all the time. So we may go over one or two again, but they're super important, a big help to me in my shop, and I hope they'll be a big help to you in your shop, because that's the point. Let's enjoy the time in our shop. Let's step over here, see what we've got. From time to time, we get an email from someone, usually feels like it's tinged with a little panic, that says, I've got a metallic patina to my die. This is simply bronzing, and it's an easy fix. What it is, is there's a metallic element to the dye stuff that actually is used to make the color. If we dye, now this is how this typically happens. If we dye, let this piece dry, then we come back in with a second coat of dye, we're going to see that metallic patina. It's an easy fix. All we have to do is take a little alcohol, and simply rub that off and it's going to disappear. We'll never see it again. Now, here's the big problem. I don't, I put five coats of dye on both of these pieces of leather. I cannot get disaster to happen on cue. Now, it's going to happen on a project. Absolutely. But maybe we could see a little bit of that, that patina there. Maybe just a little bit. Anyway, it's no panic point. Just clean it with a little alcohol. It'll go away and we can move on with our project. Over time, and with some pretty good use, the tubes and the anvils on our revolving punch can simply wear down. That's going to give us a ragged hole, or in some cases, we're going to have a hard time getting through our leather. If it's not in the budget to replace it, it's an easy fix. All I'm going to do, let's take a piece of scrap, put that behind the piece of leather that we're going to punch in. Let's punch through that, there we go, and into that back leather. Very clean hole, front and back. That's all we need to do. Now, we can replace it when the budget says we can, but until then, that's going to be a big help. This is not a common problem, but it's happened to me, so I want to bring it up. When we're hand sewing, we're going to drop in a groove line. I need that groove line to be exact on both pieces. If I do, look at that, we get a perfect cut, very clean. We don't have to try to trim or sand. So the point here is this. When I'm going to hand sew a project, I'm going to groove at one time everything I need on that project. That keeps me from, say, maybe jumping over to another project, resetting it, or dinging it. That can happen as well. So when I come back to this project, my stitch lines don't meet, so now I'm going to have to trim or sand. That opens up a whole can of worms. This is something I use in my shop, and I use this on almost every project. It may seem like a no-brainer, but you'll see what I'm talking about. Here's what I want to do. I've got five conchos, and this works in all kinds of ways, and we'll talk about that. But I want to add five conchos to my belt. I want a consistent distance from my start between each of my conchos, but also between my last and my stop. Here's an example. So on a belt, here's my inside rivet, and here's my inside size hole. I want to add five conchos. Well, let's divide 30. Yeah, there we go. Let's divide 30 by five. Easy enough. So that's going to give us increments of 6. So there's 6, 12, 18, and 24. Well, I've got a concho left over. Well, we've got good spacing there, but that's not the point. I want 5 conchos here. So let's take 30 and divide by one more than we want to add. So now we're down to 5 inches. So let's drop in 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25. Well, there we go. All we're doing is dividing by one more than we want to add thus accounting for our stop. Now, I'll mention this works in a bunch of ways. It absolutely does. If we want to add in, say, a small tooled decoration, or rivets, grommets, or we want to drop in, say, exactly 18 spots along our edges, well, let's just divide by one more. We're going to nail it every time. Cutting an inside round corner is just about impossible, and this is a good example of why we would do this. So with this panel, what I'm going to do is cut out this center piece, and then I'm going to lay that over, let's say, some reptile or some hair on. That would be beautiful, an overlay or an inset. But right here in our corners, we need a round corner there. We can always go with a round hole punch, but they're expensive, and the larger ones are hard to find, and I don't often use these in my shop. So let's go with a round end punch. 
Now I'm going to use a three quarter inch here. Size can vary. That just happens to be one of the common sizes in our shops. So let's lay this in our corner and let's do all four. Okay, we've got our four corners punched. Now, let's just cut between the two. And just clipping a corner or two. Let's see how we did. Whoa, very nice. Consistent corners, looks good. Very easy to do. I hope there's a good trick or a good tip here that's going to help you out in your shop because that's the biggest point. If we have a good time in our shop, our projects are definitely going to show that. I hope this is good information for you. Thanks for taking time to watch The Leather Element. Good luck with your projects.